Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor and welcome to a tutorial all about creating realistic AAA based interactions. I'm going to be using an asset called Interactor. This developer has created some awesome demo scenes, even recreated scenes from the Indiana Jones using their asset. And I think it just has so many options that you don't have to animate specific objects. You can use the procedural look to pick things up, to throw them around to be able to use them, walk with them, use custom things that you never thought possible in Unity. What's even better is this asset will be in Unity Summer Sale. The Unity Summer Sale starts on the 16th of July and has over 300 different assets at 50% off. It's gonna have daily flash deals of up to 70% and I'll make community posts every single day so you're always kept in the know and Interactor will actually be 90% off in the flash deal from the 23rd of July. And in this video, I'm going to show you everything it has to offer, setting up your very first interaction. And towards the end of the video, I'll have set up, I'll even have timestamps in the timeline so you can refer back to each bit that you might want. And I'm going to take you through my favorite demo scene here, which will show off a range of the cool interactions that you can do, just as an example so you can see it live. So you see, we've got the standard third person character controller that comes with Unity. We can head over to any object and we can press E to interact, we can just throw that away and even interact with objects when we're not directly looking at them. We can run around with them as if we would in a natural way and drop them, throw them away. And otherwise you can select like this cup. It will use other hands if we're facing in another direction. You can drop that. And even if you go down to pick it up, it will morph the character procedurally. So you haven't actually created animations to do this. It will do this as you want. You can even do things like picking up this painting here and it will choose which hand the character will look at it if you dictate how the character should look at particular objects you can go to somewhere on the wall and you can just place this if you want to you know place little objects you can stand side by side other objects so i can pick up the one on the left and i can also pick the one on the right because as you can see in the top hand of the screen i can scroll between assets that might be in the local area and we can actually run around with these two if we want if we want to be delicate with the things that we're holding and again, we can let go of all of these as we want. We can pick up other things like weapons in this case, carry it around how you've specified, and we can choose to holster different weapons too, and we can still run around with those. You could even have the ability to hold H and you just throw the actual items themselves. You can pick up other things like bottles and have them break. So you can see here, there's some apples here, which class as inventory based items, which you can choose to pick up. And when you do that, they will add to an inventory as if you would get something more realistic. You can even interact with things like the chest, so you open up this lid quite delicately, and you can see that it opens up its own based off inventory, and we can choose to close it again. So you've got quite a bit of flexibility in the systems that you have. I'm gonna show you how to set up your first interaction because there's so much customization, and I highly recommend checking out the video tutorials from the developer too. So with the idea of setting this up for the first time to be able to use your own character controller, this is Unity's third person character controller. And what we're gonna do is get this character to push the red button. So you'll need to add a special component to any character system that you can have. So we can add a new component to this character, which uses the thir a third person controller and the character controller. We'll add a component called Interactor. And you can see the Interactor here, and it does create a sphere at the bottom which you can set the size, as you can see here, the sphere collider. And if you adjust this radius, this is the radius of which interactions will take place. So anything within this interaction sphere will be used. And you can adjust the center point, the area, just like you would with any other collider. You can use other systems like Final IK and other things like that if you want that integration. But I'm just going to show you the basic level of integration that you need. So you can click Start Interactor, and then you need to create a new save file to save this. You can see on the right hand side with the new effector that it's called here, you can set the actual distances that these are created, but we need to select a body part. Set to body first, we can just choose left hand. So then as you can see, we can start adjusting the different sliders that we have here that adjust the horizontal angles, the offset, the vertical. And it just means that say for this left hand, it will be able to interact with objects that are within this corresponding section that we've created. So within here or within this range, which is vertically. 
But instead of being able to adjust this manually, the system is actually built to make this happen automatically. So you have much less to do. So if you make sure that it's on left hand for the new effector and you just click auto and the auto will apply what it expects the left hand to be able to do. And you can see that it does name it here. For the right hand, let's say in this instance, we can add a new effector and you can see that it's added the new effector. It's called new effector. And if we set this to right hand, in this case, we can just click auto there too. And it's auto configured where it expects that. And of course you can go into each of these and update the offsets, the angles, if you want to adjust some customizations that you want. Say you are adjusting any vertical or horizontal, you can make your sphere collider bigger so you can adjust them and make them higher. And just to note that you may see a warning saying the IK pass option is not enabled in the character controller's uh, base layer. So if you go up to your character controller, up to the animator, you double click on that so we can bring up the animator view and we can go to our base layer on this left hand side, click the little cog and you can see the IK pass. We just have to make sure that that's ticked to true to make this relevant for the system. Back on our player, we need to make sure that we use a particular layer. So you can see this Raycast and Interact layer is classed as player. We need to make sure this is created at the top of Unity. So you can see in the drop down here, we can select the layer and we can just say put that on layer 8. I'm just going to call that player and you could just leave it set by default for now. And that's everything pretty much set up in this and you can choose to collapse it if you don't want to have to see anything thereafter. Now there is a couple of helper scripts which you can add to make life a little bit easier. So the first one is we can have, add basic input interact which will communicate with the interactor component to be able to do the base level interaction. And we can also add one called basic UI which will be something which will allow us to see a list of any interactable objects and give it any pop outs that are required. And then from here we want to start by creating our first interaction on any particular object that we have. So you can see here my red button has an animator component. It just has a nice little animation which makes sure that it moves when we press it as if you would a button to interact with. We're going to add a brand new component which is called interactor object which is going to be a way that we can set what this object should do when we come to interact with it. So you can see the specific settings for the interaction. We can just set this one to manual and set it to button because it's just a simple button style press and you can set the manual settings as just the default in this and you can adjust things like speed and different look settings if you want to specifically look at the object when it happens but we're just concentrating on setting a basic example so now with that set up and ready to be used we need to create hand targets so exactly where we place our hands when we want to use this interaction so if we go back to the player that we had the interactor on it and you can either choose the left hand or the right hand. But in this case, we could just choose the right hand and the button on here just says create target. We'll click that. And if I select that and show it here, you can see a little hand that can be used. If we go on the player, you can select the left hand and create target. And you can see that we've got a left hand and a right hand ready to be used. What we can do is we can drag both of these and make them into different prefabs so they can be used anywhere that we want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the original copies because we don't need to have them floating around in the scene unnecessary. So let's say we want to attach this to the actual button. So I'm going to just parent this to the actual button so we can see that it's come closer to it. And you can see that we can specify where the direction or the position that the hand should be. So if I just select this and I just adjust this with the simple controls that we have. And I would say that looks positioned pretty nice based on where our button is. So with that object selected, we can click to add a new event because when we actually select or interact with this button, we want to play the animation. So we'll just add a new event here and I'm going to add the red button and I will go to the animator and we're just going to specify play with a string. Then when you look here, which has got the target path segments, it might well be uh, collapsed. If you open up the segment zero and you can see that the call event on end, you can see minus one is don't do anything. And zero is our end event, which is this one here. This is just what we're referencing in the object. And we need to make sure that we specify the animation name, which is just called a red button. And do remember that it's best to have your red button in my case, to have a box collider or any sort of collision 
which it may already or may not already have. And you need to make sure for any interaction to happen that a single object has a rigid body, either your player or your physical item here. We're just going to make sure that it is kinematic and we remove gravity so we can still use a physics based interaction and so it doesn't fall down to the bottom. Now, when we walk up to the button, you'll see here, you'll get the prompt, which is use E. You can see we're in the range and now we can press the E and you can see that we get the interaction with the hand that pushes against the button. You can see we can angle our player just to the side and it will interact just as you would expect and it will move the hand. Now the developers added something quite useful because now when we use this button, it looks fine, but maybe I'd want to be able to pause that a little bit to make the animation or the sort of proceduralness look a little bit better. So if we do select the red button or anything with the interactor object script, we can go onto the interaction settings, go to onto the pause interaction, which will allow you to just pause it whilst you want to keep your hand on a button or something like that. So do a very short time because I don't need much. I just want it to make it look a little bit more realistic. So I've just put it at 0.22. And then if we test that out again, you can see that the character will actually hold onto the button just a little bit longer, just for a split second longer, just to make it look like it does um, actually hold on and push down without just instantly dropping off. Let's say we stand next to this object and we can't interact with it by default. So you can actually use something called orbital reach, which allows you to interact with things around the player, even if they're outside of your overall range, which makes it easier to interact with. So if you want to be able to do that, you can select your character and go down to the new component and add a component called orbital reach. Now, once that's added, you need to add your interactor so i'm just grabbing my player and the animator we also need to grab the animator for the player and then we just need to add a button called add orbital reach layer and then you can go to your red button or something in my case you can see the interactor object script and if you go to interaction settings you need to make sure that you enable orbital reach now with orbital reach enabled we can walk over to our object we can even turn our back and still interact and you'll press e and you'll notice that our character will nicely shift over depending on the angle that we are sort of looking at if you do have any particular issues with the character doing weird things and getting weird syncing issues you can go to the update mode on your character or your player. You want to tick the box, which is animate physics. So then you can sometimes get a much more accurate sense of what the animation should be. So this was just a simple overview on what you can expect to be able to use Interactor to make more realistic interactions for your game. So if you want to install the asset, you can head over to package manager, go to my assets and then search Interactor. You can see it's Interactor interaction handler and as i recorded this it's 0.99a we can just download and import this into your project then you'll get a pop out which will give you the which give you the update now the upcoming features import examples so what i'm going to do is i'm going to import the actual examples that they've got some tutorial scenes and things to help you with setup and there's two sets of textures that you can download because they're not included in the package just to make it nice and small so if you want these import those as well and then what we can do is if we go to the interactor and we go to examples and then we navigate to scene and then we can navigate to say the unity armature you can see that the entire scene is pink because it's built for the built-in render pipeline you need to convert the materials to be using urp so we can go to window and we can go to rendering and we can go to render pipeline converter when we get this box we can just check material upgrade and we'll just initialize and convert and then you can see the converted materials in this scene this asset will go on sale in unity summer sale on july the 23rd so you can get this at a massive reduction and do be sure to check out unity's summer sale which is over 300 assets at 50 percent off with daily flash deals at 70 percent which i'll keep everybody updated by making daily community posts so you never miss out so do be sure to check out all my great assets on the unity asset store and everything you can find on my patreon to get over 225 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Massive thank you to all my patrons. Special thank you to Partives10 and Verishutha for their amazing support. So thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.